Hi, everybody. So here we are, the last day of ACI one. We have two classes left, and uh, they are the most uh, important. I don't know. I think I say about every class the most important, but they're really cool. Mm. And I would like to start uh, with a message for you um, because, uh, you know, uh, what we do now with Bill is uh, something that he really uh, dreamed uh, to do for many, many years. He is a great teacher. He was around Geshe Michael um, uh, since 2000, whatever, four probably, and uh, with Ken Rinpoche before, and he has all this knowledge, especially with his three-year retreat. We still have some obstacles, and um, we try to manage these obstacles also, and one of the obstacles is uh, that he cannot teach this class today. Uh, so, but uh, because we know how these teachings work, uh, I think uh, uh, we will manage to, to do all the classes next time uh, for ACI2 that we think will happen somewhere in February or March. We still do not have dates because I need Gesh Michael's schedule not to put ACI classes somewhere where he will be teaching. So this is the picture I received this morning. Uh, I don't know. He's flying now to Puerto Rico and uh, it's a nice place. So he will uh, be there for 24 hours and uh, it's a very, uh, Puerto Rico is an island, island on Caribbeans. And uh, I hope he will, have spent a good time there. And he left a message for you. Um, let me see if I can play. Hello, I won't be able to be there in class with you today, uh, but uh, it's a good one. He is gonna be discussing uh, emptiness, which is one of the two big ideas uh, that uh, everything these courses is based on. So I hope you enjoy it and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Thank you. Okay. So where we are? Let's do the motivation first. And uh, I suggest to close your eyes and think about like you, you can do several exhales, inhales. This is uh, to bring our awareness to the moment, like psychotherapists like to say, to here and now, which is extremely important, actually. Just uh, follow your breathing, exhale, inhale several times. Try to really feel your body. And then think about your life. Where you are in your life now. It is important because today we will come to the solution of all your problems of your life. The ultimate solution. Are you happy with your life? Do you have time to study? 
to become better in controlling your life. What do you want to change in your life? Did you try already to change it? Did it work? Do you think other people have same issues? Would you like to know how to fix it for yourself and help everybody else to fix their issues too? Go back to your breathing, open your eyes. I'm trying to replace uh, um, traditional Tibetan prayers with this uh, mental exercises in the beginning because the essence of these prayers that you will learn with, uh, with the materials of this course, it's in your homework to learn them. Uh, the essence is that uh, basically I know that uh, karmic, karmically my mental seeds wise, these teachings cost a lot. And uh, I make a decision that I will apply these teachings and help uh, basically countless living beings. You don't have to be worried how many they are. But uh, this is something that makes your seeds that you plant almost unstoppable and um, multiplies them by countless. Mm. So, and uh, also you think uh, about the fact that nothing helped, frankly, so far. I couldn't find how to stop at the very least, dying, okay, maybe I can stop some diseases, but dying is a bit difficult to work with, right? So, and uh, what can help? What can be really helpful? And this is uh, when we come to class nine, because we finished uh, so far two out of three um, lumbriums, right? We finished with renunciation. Okay, uh, I'm tired. Mm, life is difficult. Uh, mm, it is not that I'm negative, but it is uh, evidently uh, that uh, nothing really works uh, like I expected to work. Uh, second, uh, I'm tired because of my issues, my problems. It looks like everybody else has this, have the same problems. And uh, I'm tired, tired for them also. I don't want to hear that there is a, another third war in this world. I'm done. Uh, I am uh, frankly eager to do anything to stop it, right? And uh, there is a cure. And the cure comes in uh, uh, the class nine. And it is interesting because uh, yesterday um, I had uh, very little time to get ready to this, uh, the most important classes. Don't worry. It's not for the first time that I am teaching these classes. 
that my husband he texted me yeah the way uh, why i didn't uh, have much time because uh, um, a guy i'm taking care of uh, a teenager from russia who is with uh, who's here without parents he had uh, his birthday yesterday he had 20 years old um, and he's totally alone uh, he moved recently to chicago he is a hockey player and uh, he invited us to go to his uh, to watch him playing yesterday and it was very fun uh, they won uh, his team won and um, i was thinking uh, that uh, this is uh, my real practice i mean mm, i know i have a class uh, i know i i will do it uh, and i was thinking okay this, this is something that is apparently more important as of today um, we enjoyed a lot with my son we went to to see uh, Dima playing and uh, uh, my husband uh, was watching uh, classes instead of me for today uh, to uh, be sure that we didn't leave out any important ideas and he texted me three times uh, to be very practical. So I will be very practical uh, in this class because you can do it in a very, uh, how to say, intelligent and you know sc scholar way that we want. Because uh, if I will do it in traditional way, uh, you will not show up for SA2. And uh, I want you really to uh, continue studying. So, if you remember, there was a, uh, there was a point we were discussing on this five pass uh, accumulation, preparation, pass of seeing, uh, pass of uh, habituation, and not more no more learning. So there was uh, a place uh, before you see emptiness directly where you cannot be born lower than a human anymore. This is a very important point because as of today, chances that I can go to any realm, including uh, hell realms, hungry spirits realms, lots of suffering, uh, un in, in, uh, not, uh, cannot Im be imagined by a human being. They say that uh, one second in hell, hell realms, uh, during one second, you experience suffering that is uh, higher than all your sufferings during your lifetime as a human. Mm. Difficult to imagine that much pain. So we want to be sure, we want to get uh, the insurance uh, of not traveling to this uh, uh, lower realms, at the very least, right? At the very least, we want to be born as humans. And so uh, there are two ways how to make sure that you will not be doing it. And uh, some of you, probably many of you, uh, have heard already these explanations. Uh, the more you hear them, the better you understand them. So if you know what I will be talking about now, try to remember what I am doing to reproduce it after with other people. When somebody will ask you for help, somebody's life will be breaking apart, falling apart, and uh, you can uh, explain to them what's going on really. Okay, so, uh, the first presentation is, uh, you know what I will be doing, right? Uh, by the way, it's a very ancient uh, explanation of emptiness using a physical object. This is the correct name of this presentation. Uh, it was not called the pen in ancient times. It was called... Uh, an explanation of emptiness using a physical object and they would usually use you know what they would use uh, shells uh, they would use uh, 
skunks, uh, like sea skunks, you know. And uh, so uh, I should uh, ask you questions. You are supposed to give answers. Uh, just don't turn your microphones on. Uh, you can answer me in the chat. Answer to me. And uh, so the first question is easy. All the questions will be easy. What is this? Apparently, it's a pen. No doubt about it, right? I can write. I can show you. Here is the pen. I write something. It's a pen. Okay. What if a small puppy, I have just uh, the next door, I have a neighbor, and uh, she has two little dogs. Uh, so what uh, will happen if I will be waving this uh, with this thing in front of their uh, faces? What they will do? Uh, I have done it to several dogs and I can predict uh, the reaction. This is what they will do. Uh, do you think that this puppies, little puppies, or a dog, let's say, will see this object as a pen? Some people are going ahead and answering questions I didn't ask yet. <laughs> no, they see it as a chewing toy, something to play, right? A stick. Uh, very important question. Uh, who is right? Am I right thinking that uh, it's a pen which uh, can write? Or a dog is right thinking that this is a chewing toy? Hmm. Yep, both are right because uh, I can prove that we are both right. I can write, no problem. I demonstrated it. A dog can chew, trust me. It can. And uh, then what will happen if I will take the same exact object? Now, it is the most important question of all this presentation. What will happen if I will put it here on the table? It will be laying here. I will leave. I will make all the puppies, all the dogs, everybody else, all the living beings leave the room, close the door, and at that very moment when there is nobody inside what is this what this thing become a pen or a chewing toy neither yeah and everywhere in the world people they're like uh and uh, you can almost see like their mind goes from pen chewing toy pen chewing toy uh, we cannot say, right? If nobody is there, no humans, no dogs, nothing. Uh, and uh, this is exactly what this idea we were talking about, uh, Yandak Petava, remember? Uh, the idea of correct view is based on understanding of this thing. This is what this thing becomes when there are no dogs, no humans. It is like a blank screen. It is available to become anything. Uh, there are several wrong views about emptiness, so-called emptiness in this ancient teachings. Uh, I will not be really uh, going into details here, but uh, uh, at the very least, it is not uh, uh, what you see when you close your eyes, like black, 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 is not emptiness. And emptiness definitely doesn't mean that nothing matters. So it is just an object available to become something. Uh, when all the humans and all the dogs left. So this blank object is here right? We don't know what it is, what it will become. And then let's say I forgot something, I entered the room and uh, 
the moment my eyes uh, touch this object, this form and colors become what? Ta -da! A pen to me. And the moment the dogs goes back, it turns into what? Into a very nice chewing toy, uh, very comfortable for chewing, exactly as needed. Nice size, nice mm, materials. Uh, so, and uh, in this case, can we say that this thing comes from itself or it comes from me, from the dog? Apparently, if it was empty, available to become anything, and then I came back uh, and it became a pen, apparently it comes from me. But then we have an issue because uh, maybe in this case I can transform it with the power of my uh, just uh, will. Can I just wish it to become something else? Like maybe positive thinking will work. And uh, for me, it's a spiritual practice because I really do it seriously every time. Even I suspect it won't work, but let's do it seriously. Let's close our eyes. If uh, we will be capable of doing it, uh, it is all recorded. I promise that uh, we will become very famous. Okay, let's turn it into a big diamond. We will share the profit. My positive thinking, big diamond, big diamond, big diamond. Don't laugh. It's a serious thing. Uh, oops, it's not a diamond, it's a pen. And uh, it looks like there is a contradiction, but it's not. If you will think it will, it makes sense. You have many wishes that never come true. Uh, and uh, there is a deeper explanation what's going on here. Because uh, it looks like it is not enough just to wish to change something. There is a seed in my mind every time when I see uh, the object, let's say this form and colors, duck, duck colors and uh, cylinder form, a seed, mental seed in my mind cracks open and the luminous image covers this uh, uh, purple silver stick and it becomes a pen to me so how can I get the seeds in my mind that can uh, produce uh, my world results in my world uh, with uh, the laws of seeds with the laws of karma you know that anything you do you say and think plants a seed in your mind that will grow, that cannot be destroyed, and that uh, the only uh, the only destiny the seed has is to grow and open and uh, to become your new reality. So this is how this pen becomes a pen and everything else around you becomes what you see, what you experience in this world. And uh, if you haven't uh, hear this explanation yet, so you have just now planted a seed to stop uh, you from being uh, born into lower realms, like really suffering realms. Worse, much worse than humans birth. Uh, because if you really understand it and you can apply it, then you can really change your uh, 
your world and because you will change your seeds. This is the first explanation. Now comes the second one. And uh, Geshe Michael calls it nowadays the Sutra, uh, which is a joke because uh, the Sutra uh, is something that uh, is taught directly by the Buddha, like Buddha's direct words. I don't know, maybe he jokes, maybe he doesn't. But anyway, here is the second one. And uh, uh, this is a very practical understanding on how you can change your world. So imagine, uh, which is funny, I was exactly in the same position when Geshe Michael first uh, uh, invented uh, this uh, explanation, the second explanation called Two Husbands in a Kitchen. And uh, I was thinking, oh, wow, he's describing my life, basically. So uh, imagine that you are a professional mom uh, having two kids and one husband. Uh, nowadays, uh, women are working, they're having kids. Uh, they can support themselves, uh, usually, basically. And uh, I don't know, why do we need men, right? I was thinking that time, I don't really know. I didn't meet Bill yet, and I was thinking, I don't know whether I really need uh, anybody to support myself because it looks like trouble. Uh, so imagine that you have two kids and you have your job, like I was working for clinical trials and uh, your boss tells you that, you know, uh, tomorrow there will be a very early call. I don't know, probably with China. This is why early, because they start earlier. Uh, and uh, uh, you should uh, come to the office earlier. Uh, you can tell that this story was before COVID, right? Because I was for the last time in my office on the uh, 4th, the 4th of February, 2020. Never shown up since then. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's imagine. You have to come to, to the office tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. instead of 9, because we will have a very important Zoom meeting uh, with our partners or customers. And uh, you go to your kids and you say, guys, tomorrow mom should be at work very early. Help your mom, okay? Get dressed right away. Uh, we will leave uh, uh, at 7, so you need to be dressed up really early. Can you help your mom? Yes, mom, we will help you. Okay. Then the morning comes, you enter your kid's room, they are jumping on the beds, you know, uh, fighting with the cushions, you know, and uh, do, do not look like they are ready to leave. So you pack your kids in the car. Uh, they can sleep for half an hour more while you're driving them to school. Uh, and um, you're a little bit late, but it's okay. Uh, but while you were driving, you were lecturing your kids and you were saying like, you are the stupidest kids in Chicago or whatever your city is. Uh, you were the stupidest kids in Chicago. You are heartless. You didn't help your mom. I, I will be late, etc. Who hears what you are saying? Obviously, your kids, they, uh, they can hear. And uh, another person, the most important person in your life, yourself. You are the stupidest uh, the most stupid kids in Chicago. You are the most stupid kids in Chicago. Planted, 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 planted. The seed is planted. In two weeks, uh, the meeting went okay. Your boss was happy. You forgot about uh, this story with your kids. <clears throat> You're going back home. 
you buy some groceries, uh, uh, you realize that actually the reason why you need your husband is he hugs you and he tells you how beautiful you are. And actually he is not a bad dad ultimately. So you are very inspiring, inspired by this fact, going back home, hoping for some hugs after uh, this day at work, you're tired, have these bags, heavy bags with groceries. You open the door and what does he tell you? He says, you are a stupid wife because blah, 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 blah. <gasps> Why? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I bought groceries. I'm a good mom for my kids. I'm working. Uh, I'm mom, wife, uh, professional. Uh, cannot do more. What do you want from me? And he's unhappy with something and he's yelling at you. So, uh, and here where, uh, where these teachings come, right? Because uh, everybody's natural reaction is uh, either to yell back, right? Very helpful. Resolves all the conflicts always. Or uh, get offended, you know, uh, feel resentment. Uh, and then because resentment, it means that uh, I do not feel I am powerful enough to hit you now. Uh, so I will wait for later. I will wait for another moment where you will be vulnerable. <laughs> and then I, I can revenge. So this is what usually we do. But let's think uh, what's going on first. I probably will plant more seeds if I will yell back, right? I will yell back. The seeds will grow. Two, three weeks, somebody else will yell at me, right? The seeds will the seed will open. I yelled at somebody, seed will grow. This is why he is yelling at me. I yelled at my kids. I forgot completely about it. Mm. So and uh, this is uh, this is what sansara is uh, i'm constantly recreating with my natural reactions i recreate all the bad things i do not want in this life this is a tragedy of sansara uh, of this uh, necessity or how to say uh, i have to uh, take over me again and again this uh, 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 uncontrollable seeds, right? They, they are ripening. It is not under my control. So here is the moment you can start controlling it. You can get control. You can get your control back, right? So what will I need to do if I came to ACI one class and listen to the story next time somebody else yells at me maybe my husband instead of yelling back at him instead of calling him stupid I will do something to prove that I'm not stupid I will go to another room maybe to the bathroom will look in the mirror and will think okay you are stupid. You yelled at your kids and now he's yelling at you. Then I will want to be smart. I will go back to my husband. I will say, mm, honey, probably you had a rough day at work. Do you want me to give you a massage? Do you want me to cook you anything? Then you will be smart because you... Uh, you buried the seeds, you know, they, they will be stopped. You will not reinvest into the seeds. So this is a presentation, the Two Husband Sutra <laughs> by Kesha Michael. And uh, uh, 
uh, somebody will say that uh, uh, victims do like that, like uh, it is absolutely opposite from the position of the victim because you are getting your control back. It does not mean that other people should uh, torture you or yell at you. It means that you understand uh, where does it come from? Why is he yelling at me? Because I yelled at my children. If I stop yelling at my children, if I stop my natural reactions, uh, I can do something not being a victim. I can do something being a, at my power. And my power is I know where these things come from. Uh, if it is true that this pen comes from me, my husband comes from me, everything else comes from me. If this is true, then only I can change this cycle. Nobody else. By planting the seeds I want to have. Do I want to plant seeds when somebody yells at me? If yes, go ahead. You can do it. Okay. So now we are coming to the class because that was a prerequisite to understand the class. And um, Geshe Michael says that uh, 30 years ago, he was teaching it like really from a um, traditional perspective. And nowadays, uh, uh, we need to learn how to apply all these teachings in our everyday life. Otherwise, the miracle will not happen. Um, and don't think that these teachings were taught to some historical figures by the Buddha Shakyamuni, somebody uh, two and a half thousand years ago passed away. He had teachings uh, uh, and students, and uh, now we have just uh, you know leftovers from that. You will see it is not exactly this way. Maybe you are getting better teachings than uh, uh, Buddha Shakyamuni students. Maybe it is not exactly as it looks like. And um, the key to all these teachings is this two husband story. You will understand now because everything is in there. And uh, honestly, enlightened beings, they do not teach uh, anything that you cannot use in your life. Everything that is in these books, you can use it every moment, really every moment. And the essence is in this Two Husbands Sutra. So um, when you heard this Two Husbands and the pen, you are on the way to stop yourself from the bad habit to go into our realms. Let's put it this way. Uh, from And also you actually on the way to stop many bad addictions but uh, this is very important mm, you get some trainings and uh, the purpose of all these trainings is to see emptiness directly uh, we were talking about it so this third pass lam uh, nam sum remember we are still in this three principal paths. And now we are talking about the third one, which is Yandak Petava, right? Uh, correct worldview. Cor correct worldview will stop all the suffering ultimately. What does it mean? It means that what we see uh, every day and what really is are different things. It means that uh, they talk about two uh, truths. Uh, it will be a question number one uh, on the homework. Uh, they say that there are two kinds of truths and uh, one is called uh, ultimate truth and the other one is called deceptive. Uh, very famous, Dundam, uh, Dundam Demba, by the way, I have slides. And Kunzab uh, Denpa. Uh, Just a moment. 
Let me show you my slides. Okay. So uh, what is ultimate truth? Ultimate truth is the emptiness of all things, this blank screen, right? Uh, when everybody left uh, and uh, this object, this form and uh, colors was left uh, in the room, all the ducks left, all the humans left. Uh, this object that is available to become anything, uh, there was emptiness, right? All things, they possess emptiness. And uh, uh, what we usually see is uh, deceptive truth or deceptive reality. And uh, basically everything you can look at, right? All the objects you can see, they are deceptive. Uh, why they are deceptive? Because how they look like and what they are, their real nature is different from what you think. They uh, deceive you. Okay, let's go to... Uh, our two stories, the pen story. Where is the deceptive reality? And uh, I want to make uh, sure that you understand uh, the word truth. Uh, unfortunately, in Tibetan is denpa, right? Dundam uh, denpa, kunzab denpa. And denpa is the word for truth. But what it meant here, uh, it is not truth because how can the can the truth be deceptive like can the truth be lie a lie mm, it's about reality it's about two different realities the one that we see and the other one that we do not see one is deceptive and the other one is ultimate what is the deceptive reality of this pen uh, we can see the object, it looks like it is outside, has nothing to do with my seeds, right? This is what I see. This is my deceptive reality. And uh, the ultimate reality is uh, the emptiness this object possesses. When everybody left, right? We said, okay, no humans, nobody projecting their seeds onto this uh, reasonable basis right so it is available uh, somebody with the seeds come into the room and it becomes something for them right a pen or a chewing toy so um, in the story with two husbands where is the deceptive uh, reality it looks like my husband yelled at me with no reason. I didn't do anything. He yelled at me. Uh, this is how it looks like. But what actually happened, he could uh, hug me, he could kiss me, he could do anything. He is empty of his own uh, nature. He he will yell at me if I will yell back at him in two, three weeks again because he is empty and I'm forcing him to uh, yell at me because my seed open, the seed that I planted by yelling at somebody in the past. Okay, so I hope it is clear. Now, something really important we need to talk about is uh, uh, this uh, ultimate reality. So uh, this is a pen, but uh, the pen is, uh, but the object is not emptiness. It possesses emptiness. Every single object around you, yourself, your own mind, possess, they possess emptiness. Uh, so this is the word for ultimate reality, right? Uh, 
it is very important to understand what emptiness is empty of. But it will come uh, at the end of the class. Let's uh, uh, put it uh, this way that it is empty of self-existence, of this uh, wrong thinking that uh, I didn't do anything. He just yelled at me uh, from this thinking that uh, the pen uh, is... Uh, has no connection to my past actions mm, that I uh, I could give somebody hand the pen to somebody right. Uh, my bank account is uh, in such a poor state, uh, such a lousy state, because it's just bad luck. I don't know because uh, uh, I didn't find a good job or something. No. My bank account looks good when I am generous. It looks bad when uh, I'm uh, not paying my taxes, uh, hopefully not stealing, but stealing too. Uh, when I'm being greedy, stingy, you know, this is, uh, this is why I don't have money. So um, let's go back to ultimate reality. Ultimate reality is uh, something that is probably the most important in these teachings because this is how you can become this enlightened being because you also possess this emptiness. And uh, it's an existing thing. It is a negative thing. It is something I'm not. Like... Uh, Chicago is not New York, right? Uh, it is a negative thing. Uh, absent, uh, there is an absence of uh, uh, New York and Chicago. <laughs> so this negative thing is, uh, we are not used to think about negative things and negative does not mean bad here. It means absence of something. Uh, and this absence of my uh, self-nature, of uh, self-nature of other things, is crucial to become this enlightened being. Uh, and you can um, perceive it indirectly, this emptiness of other things, when I explain to you the pen story or to husbands, you can almost touch it mentally, right? When I say that, uh, what it will become if everybody will leave the room, right? All the humans left, all the dogs left. Mm, and uh, what can you say about this object? What is it? And you say, nothing, it is empty, it is available. Uh, this blank screen has a potential to become something when this will be projected onto the screen. This is emptiness. Mm. So basically, uh, when you can uh, touch it mentally, it does something. I told you, if you will really understand the pen story and to husband story, and you will change your behavior as a result of it, understanding that it is important what you say, think, and do, it will close lower realms for you, you know, forever. You, you will not go, go back to these lower realms. It's a very powerful thing, right? Just by touching it mentally, what will happen if you will touch it uh, directly in a direct perception of emptiness? Uh, so how it happens? Uh, you have heard about this five paths, accumulation, preparation, path of seeing, path of habituation, and path of uh, no more learning. Then uh, apparently, because you heard already the pen story definitely in this course and this two husband story, you are now definitely on the path of preparation. And... Uh, you're being trained basically on this path. You uh, learn many 
meditations on emptiness, proofs of emptiness. You do analytical meditation. You uh, develop your meditator skills uh, to reach uh, a specific platform, meditating platform in uh, form realms, very high meditation skills. Uh, they say it is possible to get to this platform within a couple years if you meditate uh, daily and if your life is not stressful, you don't have uh, many things going on, like uh, very predictable, then it can take couple years to get to this platform so and then uh, because of all your training all your serving to maybe to your teacher maybe to other people uh, then the day comes and you uh, see uh, directly how this pen comes from your seat you basically you are able to slow down your mind so much that you see the seed in your back back of your mind cracks open and the small luminous image covers this shape and for uh, and colors and it becomes an object you that can function for you remember we called it a chuchok the highest you know evolution of a human because after that uh, normally, if you have this uh, meditative skills, you go into meditation within a couple hours uh, after this chuchuk uh, event, and uh, you see emptiness directly, or it is more uh, correct to say perceive emptiness directly, because obviously you do not do it with your eyes. So what happens is that we are talking about why this uh, ultimate reality stuff is important. Because with this direct perception, you are basically becoming another being. Uh, I like the Geshe Michael uh, metaphor. He says that imagine that you have one diamond cell in your body now after that, like one cell beca became a diamond cell like uh, deathless you know pure etc and then it's like a good cancer that spreads uh, out in your body and then gradually you become a totally enlightened being but it starts with this experience uh, the point of no re non-return when you see emptiness uh, directly so Okay, going back to uh, the pen and uh, this two husband story, why you have to hear to these uh, two things is because it starts the whole process. This is how you hear about emptiness for the first time. Then you can implement it in your life. And then you, you get some training and you can see emptiness directly. Um, it is interesting that uh, we constantly see emptiness, like uh, they compare it with the diamond wall, you know, that diamond, unlike um, glass, uh, does not, uh, uh, how to say, uh, does not uh, change the image. Like if you will get a diamond wall, uh, independently on the angle how you look at this wall it will be uh, completely transparent so and uh, they say in these uh, ancient books that we look at the objects around us we look at their emptiness all the time and we do not see it so it is like uh, uh, I like in DCI 7, uh, which is a brilliant course, I suggest you to attend once uh, you will hear about the Diamond Cutter Institute uh, level 7 Geshe Michael course about how to touch the diamond world, meaning to perceive emptiness directly. Uh, he compares this uh, uh, 
uh, this experience, uh, not experience, sorry, this uh, emptiness, he compares to the rock underneath Manhattan. You know, uh, part of New York, uh, the main part was built on uh, Manhattan. And uh, the basis of Manhattan is a rock. Uh, this is why they can build all these uh, skyscrapers there. All this uh, famous New York skyline is built on Manhattan. And uh, the rock is solid, so solid, it gives this uh, basis to uh, almost the whole city. And it is completely invisible. People, they walk uh, on the surface every day uh, for many years, like Geshe Michael, he was working there for, for many years and they do not see it. They do not think about it. Uh, and it is always there. And this is uh, the same with emptiness. Uh, it is there. Uh, it is the most important thing we can learn about in our life. We look at it and we do not see it. Uh, and uh, there was a question I remember, uh, uh, can we see, like a uh, quite frequent question, can we see emptiness directly like uh, during uh, a class or I don't know, in the street or uh, if I think really deep? No, it can happen only in a deep meditation of uh, this uh, form realm uh, level. There is a special platform for this meditation meaning your state of mind. And uh, basically, um, this is a level of meditation when all your sense powers, they turn off. If somebody will, I don't know, put uh, French fries in front of your nose, you cannot notice it because basically your body is still in this uh, realm, desire realm, but your mind, goes to another level to form realm. Okay, so um, that was question number one. We are coming now to a very sexy question. Uh, I had difficulties with this question, I remember. And uh, uh, this is, uh, important <clears throat> and uh, you probably will need to go back to these things uh, several times because uh, 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 we need to talk about tendril which is uh, uh, interdependence uh, interdependence it's an old word uh, nowadays Geshe Michael calls it just dependence and uh, mm, this is how things do work. Like, let's talk about uh, uh, again uh, the pen story and the husband in the kitchen story. So, what is tendril dependence here uh, in the pen? Uh, dependence means that uh, it is how this object is created. Emptiness is uh, uh, how it is not. So dependence here uh, in the uh, pen story will be my seeds creating it, right? Uh, and uh, how it does not exist as itself, you know, self-existently without my seeds. You can put anything. In uh, the story with the hu two husbands in the kitchen, by the way, why two husbands? Because one husband exists in the kitchen and the other one doesn't. And we will uh, discuss it later. The one that uh, doesn't exist later in the details. Mm, the one that doesn't exist is uh, probably, you know, which one is I didn't do anything. Uh, that husband does not exist. But another husband does exist. And this is dependence or dependent origination. 
uh, the one that depend on depends on my seeds, right? Coming from me yelling at my uh, children. This husband does exist. Uh, so uh, it is important to understand how we create uh, our world. And there are three explanations of this dependent origination. Uh, and they are not related to uh, modern uh, Buddhist uh, schools. Maybe you heard about uh, Nyingma, Kagyu, uh, Geluk, Sakya, etc. Um, many, many there are four of them, these four. Uh, they are related to uh, the way it was taught by the Buddha. And uh, there were basically four and a half schools taught by the Buddha himself. Very interesting because uh, he uh, was uh, working with different audiences and he was able to see because he was an enlightened being. Uh, I mean, he is an enlightened being and he was able to see what are their capacities? And he was capable of teaching according to the capacities. Remember, it was one of the uh, qualities of the teacher. He or she should be able to uh, teach you according to your capacities. So uh, we say that uh, there are several groups, basically three groups. Uh, that explain uh, dependence. And uh, first is functional group, functionalist group. They think that anything that functions is equal that this thing exists. Uh, existing things should perform a function, all of them. Three schools out of four and a half taught by the Buddha agreed on that. Uh, so they, they say that things depend on their uh, causes and conditions. Like in the husband and the kitchen story, this husband depend on me yelling uh, on my, at my children, right? I planted seeds. It depends on my seeds because I yelled at my children. Uh, unfortunately, this explana explanation doesn't cover and changing object, for example, empty space uh, or emptiness itself. What do I mean when I say um, empty space? It does not mean the uh, space between uh, two walls, like behind me, you can see the space between two walls, right? Uh, empty space means uh, uh, like not only space between two walls, but actually the space these walls occupy, like uh, not only something empty, but also what is occupied, right? Uh, it's like uh, uh, we can say a place for something to be in. And don't worry if uh, it is a little bit unclear. Many things uh, in this ACI courses are beautiful because we were never thinking about them. And uh, uh, it's a very good exercise. By the end of ACI courses, I guarantee you will feel that you became more intelligent than before and uh, your memory will get better. Um, okay, so the first group thinks that uh, uh, functionalists, uh, they say that, okay, uh, things exist because they function and uh, uh, they depend, everything is functioning things, they depend on their causes. Let's think who belong to this group. And I think this is uh, for the first time where uh, when you can hear about these schools, you will hear a lot about them uh, further. First is uh, the school of detalists or Abhidharma. Mm, don't try to remember it. Uh, you will remember it with the time. 
uh, but uh, they have some specific ideas. All the schools, they have some specific ideas on how this reality functions. And uh, every higher school is a little bit closer to the truth, to the, to the highest school. Uh, because uh, Buddha Shakyamuni was teaching to different audiences, he would teach them what they can grasp. And this is how we ended up with so many schools. So the lowest school is data list. Then we have a uh, school of logic, also called sutrists. Uh, then we had uh, uh, the school of uh, uh, mind only, or Gesh Michael likes nowadays to call them mentalists. And all these three schools, two of them are Hinayana, lower school, uh, data lists, and logic school, and one is Mahayana, mind-only school, they think that uh, everything depends on their causes. This is how uh, they describe dependence. Okay, the next school comes and they say, you know what, your explanation is not good enough because it does not cover the empty space and emptiness. And uh, they are called independent schools. Uh, so three lower schools, data lists, logic, and uh, uh, mind only. Uh, by, by the way, maybe I have a slide about it. Yeah, here. So here they are, these three classical Buddhist, uh, lower Buddhist schools of ancient India. Uh, Detalist, Sutrist, uh, Logic, and Mind Only. They say everything comes from causes. This is how things exist. Uh, the other group called Independent say that, you know what? You cannot explain how this... Uh, since without causes uh, exist that are changing or unchanging, uh, anything changing or unchanging, they say, depend on their parts. Like, for example, we can take empty space. I don't know, the empty space occupied by this planet, uh, the Earth. And uh, there are different parts because uh, there is something uh, on the north, on the south, we can divide it uh, into, uh, we can divide it by two, it, they will be left and right. So there are parts. And uh, they say, this is how this uh, uh, unchanging, uncaused things exist. Uh, it will take you probably some time to figure why it was so important. Uh, because uh, it didn't uh, make sense to me in the beginning. But uh, if you will do all the homeworks and all the classes, uh, all the homeworks and all the classes, uh, then uh, uh, you will get deeper in the in the meaning. Okay, so. Independent schools, they also were able to explain uh, the existence of uh, uh, the dependence of the empty space and emptiness. How it is related to emptiness? Every object has emptiness. So it means that uh, uh, basically uh, I can uh, say that there is an emptiness of the pen, of myself, of a cup, etc. Okay, uh, there is another school that is uh, even higher, and they say that this one explain is better, explain uh, uh, dependence better. So the highest school is uh, called, uh, yeah, this is independent group. 
I didn't tell you that it's a lower half of the highest school because the highest school called middle way has two parts, like lower part and higher part. So here is the highest explanation. They say that all things depend uh, uh, on me projecting uh, something onto a reasonable basis. And this is the ultimate meaning of dependence. It means that uh, I'm creating uh, the object by thinking and calling this object uh, as I do. And this is very profound. Uh, if it doesn't make sense to you, uh, don't get upset. You are planting now seeds, you will definitely understand that in future. And uh, so again, uh, dependence is a result of me projecting something onto a reasonable basis, or you can say it in a different way, uh, that all things exist depending on uh, uh, me thinking and uh, calling them as I, as I do, as I call and think. Okay. Mm. So, there will be more details uh, because uh, it is very subtle sometimes uh, how these uh, different schools, they uh, define uh, their um, dependent origination, this dependence. And um, even uh, emptiness, uh, not all of them, they call it emptiness. It is very important because we have exact same issues that this uh, ancient Indian guys had. We misunderstand emptiness and uh, there is a way to go. And in order to get rid of all incorrect understandings, uh, we need to study these schools. We need to uh, apply efforts to understand their position and then to defeat this position by uh, thinking about uh, um, what, is, uh, what is not covered. Like in the example with, uh, uh, with this... Uh, uh, Let's, uh, uh, let's take uh, uh, two husbands in the kitchen, like functionalist group, they would say, okay, the yelling husband comes from me yelling at my seeds, right? This is dependent origination of the husband. Then uh, uh, for functionalists, then independent group will say, okay, uh, my husband has parts. Nobody can, uh, and uh, he also depends on his parts. And then the highest uh, school will say that uh, I am projecting him because I planted the seeds. Uh, I project uh, the content of my seeds onto a reasonable basis. There is a body and there is a red face. Uh, I can hear decibels coming in my ears. And then my seats open. And I uh, put a label. I said, I say, this is my husband yelling at me. And I'm not saying my husband, husband uh, uh, saying I love you. You know, my husband is yelling at me. I'm seeing and call in this way because the seed is being projected. This is the highest um, view. What would happen if you would really understand this highest view? You would be really close to see emptiness directly. This is why we need to go uh, to walk through all these uh, stages and uh, 
clean away all the incorrect views because this is how you will make this jump you know evolution uh, human evolution uh, find all the mistakes in your views and it will take some time don't uh, get upset and don't don't get discouraged you will you will be able to do it okay mm, then the last question left is uh, about uh, ourself it is interesting because in this teaching they say that uh, self uh, does not exist and the question is give a description of this non-existing self or self nature according to master chandra kirti uh, and it's a it's an easy to understand question but many people are getting confused for some reason because uh, they would say mm, the self mm, does not exist but uh, then I can debate you and I, I would say like, okay, who is present now uh, and watching the class? And uh, obviously there is some somebody there, right? So what it is, if it's not self. And uh, uh, so there is no self or me that exists from its own side. Interesting enough, this is exactly what we feel uh, by default by default we have a, a vague feeling that we have our mm, self nature like i exist from my own side uh, and this is why we uh, make many mistakes in our life plant bed seeds because of misunderstanding where does this self where does ina uh, the way I uh, I feel it comes from it does not it does not exist by itself and this is why they say the self does not exist but uh, there is a dependent origination right uh, I exist because of my seeds that I planted in the past the seeds ripen into me into what I call me uh, I don't have any nature of my own, but nothing has any nature of their own. Everything comes through dependent origination and in the highest understanding, uh, in the implication school, uh, I forgot to call it, like the highest is uh, the school uh, that is called consequences or implications. And it uh, corresponds to Madhyamika Prasangika, the highest uh, Buddhist school um, that teaches uh, uh, the best explanation of emptiness and uh, seeds. So how I do not exist? I do not exist from my own side, independently on anything else. How I do exist? I'm forced uh, I am a projection forced by my previous actions, thoughts, and uh, uh, words of my previous actions. So this is how I exist. And uh, uh, this is one of the most important questions probably in the whole ACI course, because unfortunately, uh, we have a tendency to defend this thing uh, uh, that does not exist at all. We think that uh, we have some uh, some uh, how to say uh, self-existence and uh, it needs to be defended. And by defendant me and my we create all the bad seeds and all the suffering comes with these seeds. Uh, did I leave anything? Yeah, okay. 
And then the last question that uh, I will cover, and then uh, we will not make a break. Sorry, translators, I was <laughs> uh, too inspired by the, the topic. Uh, we will finish in uh, five minutes, and uh, then there will be a break. Uh, I understand I should stay online. I should not stop the... Um, the Zoom because uh, of technical questions, some technical stuff. Uh, okay, and uh, then we will have a break. And uh, in one hour, 40 minutes, we will restart the last class. We will, we will start the last class. Uh, okay, I am told that there will be a surprise. Surprise, okay. Uh, so uh, how do these uh, three schools, they see um, me? Because the most important person in my world is me, right? So <laughs> this is the question that is really was really bothering me. Like, do they say I do not exist? Like, how should I understand it? Uh, self uh, does not apply to me functioning, to function in me. It applies to... Uh, self-existent self, right? And uh, uh, it is important to understand the thing that is called gakcha. Usually we do not like words uh, that cannot be easily, you know, replaced by something else, but this word uh, was kept by, kept by Gesh Michael because we cannot replace it. It does not exist in uh, English or Russian or Ukrainian or French. Uh, there is no such a word. So the word gakcha is something that we think that exists and it's not. Uh, gakcha is uh, translated by, uh, from Tibetan like, like a thing that we deny. And what it means, it's a self-existing thing. This is what we deny. Uh, it is what emptiness is empty of. Uh, it is empty of gakcha. If you will think uh, in the this two husband uh, explanation, like uh, it's this husband that I didn't do anything husband. I didn't do anything, he yells at me. This is something that is being described by the thing that does not exist, cannot exist, did never existed, and will never exist. It is not just absence. Like I can say that, uh, I don't know, uh, my credit card uh, is not in my pocket, right? Uh, but for example, in uh, France, uh, I didn't have any credit cards. And if I will say my French credit card is not in my pocket, this is what gakcha is. Like a French credit card, non-existing, uh, that is in my pocket. This is gakcha. Uh, it is uh, also uh, like anything you, you know that does not exist, like... Uh, we were saying that uh, uh, three meters tall or um, purple or pink elephant uh, rampaging uh, in my room, you know, uh, something like that, two-headed. Nobody will look for this elephant. Everybody knows that it's a joke because it does not exist. So the funny thing is that yourself, that you were thinking that exists, is like this two-headed purple elephant. Never existed, does not exist, cannot exist at all. So what functionalists, they say about self? They say that self has no cause, uh, that has no causes, does not exist. They say, there is a self, it should have causes. 
what uh, independence say about uh, self they say uh, the things existing without parts do not exist self-existing thing without parts does not exist and uh, the highest school prasangikas or um, implications schools or consequences school what do they say they say that the things that self-existing without me projecting it or we can use different words naming and thinking about it does not exist so basically you exist uh, you function but you come from what you have uh, from your thoughts from your words and from your actions exactly in the same way everything else things people events in your life okay uh, this is uh, this class is the key to realize emptiness and uh, uh, and to reach uh, all these uh, beautiful things we were talking about and the next class, uh, we will talk about uh, uh, more practical side of it, as usually. And now I think we can... Uh... Okay, thank you very much, all the volunteers. Thank you, all the participants. And uh, uh, we will see each other in uh, one hour and a half for the last class. Uh, and. Uh, it is one of my favorite classes. <laughs> okay, see you.